Hello, I just marathoned all the Spider-Man movies. Um, just wanted to show off my little Spider-Man pin there. Got my jacket. Um, I'm also wearing my Venom shirt in honor. Um, ironically, I didn't watch the Venom movies. Um, but yeah, uh, I didn't watch these exactly in order because uh, we watched the uh, new animated Spider-Verse movie last Tuesday and I, I had should have watched it last, but here we are. Anyways, um, yeah, I got this, uh, I guess I show off, yeah, watched all the movies. Um, I got this a uh, combo pack from uh, Walmart um, a couple months ago, but hadn't actually opened it or sat down to watch it. One weird thing, they had them out of order. So it literally seemed like an employee was just like, yep, that's all the Spider-Man movies. We don't care about order. Um, so that was, if, if you come across this pack, know there might be that slight annoyance. Um, but yeah, it's got all three of the original, uh, Tobey Maguire ones, um, and then it has the two Andrew Garfield, so. Uh, also what was really cool was the, uh, two, the first two Tobey Maguire ones had, like, a pop-up video kind of thing, where it had, like, trivia little bubbles throughout the movie, and I was like, this was made for me, this is awesome, but then they, they stopped doing that. Um, but yeah. Oh, I should say spoilers for all these movies. I'm gonna try to not spoil the newest Spider-Man though. Um, because I really want you guys to watch it. It's amazing. The uh, new Spider-Verse movie about Miles Morales. It's amazing. Uh, I think it might actually be my favorite Spider-Man movie. Um, but yeah, um, anyways, first one, you know, Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire, uh, they're, all of Tobey's are, uh, directed by, uh, uh, Sam Raimi, is Sam, right? I'm so prepared. Yeah, Sam Raimi, um, <laughs> who also directed, like, The Evil Dead and Army of Darkness movies, and uh, the newest Doctor Strange. Um, but yeah, so, why does this not work? That, that's what the box looks like. It's got all of them in there. Um, yeah, the first Toby one has uh, the Green Goblin as the villain, played by Willem Dafoe, and he is so great in this role, like, he is genuinely creepy, and, because he does reprise his role in a later movie. We'll get there. Um, but yeah, he's just, he's so perfect. Uh, and it was just, it really is, like, a great jumping off point, because I feel like this was kind of what made the, kind of Marvel, like, the MCU feasible because, like, some of the movies in, like, the 90s were not, like, legit movies. They didn't have, like, proper budgets. They were just kind of, were like, let's see if we can get some money. But I feel like this one was the first one where they legit put some effort to it. Um, yeah, the first one I feel like is kind of the standard by which all the others are judged off, or... Yeah, judged against. Um, oh, by the way, I didn't write a script for this, so if it seems off the cuff, it's because it is. Um, yeah, then uh, the second one, uh, that has Alfred Molina as Doc Ock, and he is also amazing. Um, it's been a while since I watched that one. He's really good. You, he commits to the character. Um, also, one of the things, uh, his, uh, 
octopus arms, whatever you want to call them, uh, they were, it was still kind of in the days of, of like physical special effects, uh, practical special effects, I should say. Um, like CG was coming into play, but it, not, not as much. Uh, so it was used really sparingly, which I think was wise. Um, but yeah, his arms, those are all puppets. They had puppeteers moving them. Uh, there is a great like little behind the scenes little video here on YouTube. I'll link it below if I can find it, um, where he's singing If I Were a Rich Man with the arms like dancing along. It's great. Um, he also reprises his role later. Spoilers. Um, and then there, unfortunately, there was a third one from, from Toby and that one is not good. Um, it's, it's, it's so bad. So it has Sandman as the primary villain played by Thomas Hayden Church. And I feel like had they committed to just having one bad guy, it would have been better, but instead they were like, no, let's have it be super long and let's have multiple bad guys for some reason. Um, Cause it also has Venom played by Topher Grace. What, what were they thinking? Like, like the new Venom movies with Tom Hardy are so much better in comparison with Topher Grace's performance. It's just like, I don't understand what they were thinking casting him. Apparently he quit that 70s show to play this part. And I'm like, I'm judging your choices, my dude. Um, but yeah, uh, what else? Uh, oh, also, um, what, what is his name? Um, they have, uh, Harry Osborne played by, um, James Franco. Uh, he, uh, he's also kind of a bad guy. He has this whole like soap opera kind of arc and it's just like, there's too much in this movie is basically what I'm saying. Cause his, his could have been a whole movie on in and of itself where at the beginning of the movie, he like figures out like, Oh, Spider-Man is Peter Parker and he tries to kill him and then he gets conked on the head. He gets amnesia. And then they're like, Oh, we can be friends now. And that's a good part of the movie. And then he starts hearing his dad's ghost voice and is like, Oh yeah, I should kill Peter Parker. And then he tries to kill him again and he's not, and he burns half of his face off and then he disappears from the movie for a while. And then there's starting to be a big fight at the end. And Peter Parker is like, Oh, I need your help. So he goes and helps him. And then he just dies. And I'm like, this was like three beats too many in somebody's story arc. Like, God dang. So, so much drama with him. Um, too much. Let's be real. Honestly, I feel like Spider-Man 3 is the worst one, and that's seen a lot, because after that I watched the Andrew Garfield ones. Andrew Garfield is a really good actor, and he you can tell he like genuinely cared about this role, which is unfortunate, because it was written terribly. Um, both of his movies, like, they're, they're just not good. Um... And yeah, the first one he has the the lizard guy, Doctor Connors, who also there was a Doctor Connors in the Tobey Maguire movies, but they like just did nothing with them. I think they were planning to do something, but then just, uh, but you know, then they made Spider Man three and it got taken away from them. Um, but yeah, the the lizard guy, it just, it, it just baffled me. 
Uh, well, I guess he was kind of like a mad scientist because he was missing an arm. And, but then, like, as soon as he grows an arm back, he's instantly, like, defaulting to opening doors with that arm. And I'm like, I don't think you'd do that. You've had only the one hand for at least, like, 30, 40 years because he had said that's why he went into science was to try to fix this. And then he's just like, oh, yeah, let me open this door. And I'm like, could you guys not have thought about this in the writing process? Um, I know it's a minor complaint, but the movie's garbage. Um, also, um, oh, I forgot. Uh, back to, uh, to Spider-Man 3. Because, uh, both, both the amazing Spider-Man and Spider-Man 3 introduce Gwen Stacy. So Gwen Stacy, in both of these, are natural redheads, and they keep John dying and blonde and I'm like why so for uh, Spider-Man 3 Gwen Stacy was played by uh, Bryce Dallas Howard and they had her be like a platinum blonde and it just does not go well with her skin tone it, she looks so washed out um also she just I don't know didn't have any chemistry with Spider-Man, so it's kind of like what? It's like I'm not not feeling this. Um, and that, so back to this one. Um, Emma Stone in Amazing Spider-Man is Gwen Stacy, and I feel like in the first one they didn't really have that much screen chemistry. Her and Andrew Garfield, maybe it was direction. I don't know, I couldn't put my finger on it, but it just, it felt very awkward. Um, and then the second one. The bad guy was, uh, uh, Electro. And he was played by Jimmy Fox. So he starts out as this really dorky guy who has like who's balding and he has gap in his teeth and he falls into a vat of eels and he turns blue and his teeth are fixed and I'm like D this just makes no sense why have him have a the tooth gap before if you're gonna do this silliness um and yeah and then other things happen with Gwen Stacy. She just goes, thaw. and then the movie's just over. There's not really like time to. You're just like, oh damn, and then they just dropped and Andrew Garfield's movies. Grant, I mean, they're not good, but I feel bad for the actor because he was good in them. If that makes sense. Um, but yeah, if you come across this box set, highly recommend, because yeah, lots of special features for each one. It was cool. Um, so, debating. Um, then we have the, do I have these in order? No, I don't. The Tom Holland ones. Um, so, the slight problem with these ones is you kind of need to watch the rest of the Marvel movies. If you're just watching them like as standalone, you kind of lose out on some stuff. Um, it it kind of feels like you're in in between movies. You know what I mean? Um, like, you won't get all the references. There's scenes obviously missing. Because, like, you know, Far From Home takes place right after, uh, like, he gets back from the blip. You know, after Infinity War and, and Endgame and stuff. So, like, 
if you didn't see Infinity and Endgame, you don't understand why he's in the emotional place that he is. So, I, I feel like that's a s slight weakness, but, um, yeah. Homecoming's really good. They're all really good. Um, who's the bad guy in this one? Oh, the bad guy is the, uh, the vulture, and it's played by Michael Keaton, who is, you know, 80s kids, who is Batman. And he's actually going to be playing Batman in the Flash movie that's coming out here soon. So, um, but yeah, he's really great in that, really intimidating and stuff. But he's also one of those villains where it's like, I kind of get why you went along this path. Um, for that matter, the ones in the old ones kind of, like, some of them it's like, ooh, I, I understand why you went down that path I, or the circumstances that befell you that led you to this and makes them more relatable I don't know um then after that was Spider-Man Far From Home um I did say spoilers at the beginning cause yeah Mysterio is the bad guy Jake Gyllenhaal who saw that coming um but yeah like I said this movie's after uh, Infinity War and Endgame. So, like, he... Like, Spider-Man is very much dealing with the death of Tony Stark and also, like, having been blipped out of existence for five years. And... Yeah, like... It, there's a lot of emotional weight to this one um, that I feel you need... The other movies to kind of fill in um um they did really film it at, in london though bt dubs um and yeah and this was really cool oh and these all have like really great special features um also my uh Blu-ray player, it just automatically plays them after the movie, so that's cool. Um, but yeah. Um, so then after that, we have No Way Home, which is awesome. Um, and it brings back a bunch of their... I mean, they're kind of on the back of the box there. It brings back a bunch of the main villains from the previous movies, and it kind of tries to give them like a redemption arc a little bit uh or you know tra tries to um you know like alpha molina's back in, as doc ock and they fix the little connector thing and then he's like oh let me help you and just um and again willem dafoe as the goblin is just top tier amazing um Oh, and then Jamie Foxx comes back as Electro, and he just has his... But he's not blue throughout the movie like he was in the previous one. Um, He's just looking like Jamie Foxx. He's got his fixed teeth, he's got perfect hair, and I'm like... You didn't have to go all, go all evil villain, you just need a little zappy zap and you were fine. Um, and, uh, Thomas Hayden Church also is back, and so is the guy who plays Dr. Connors. Um, but, but they're, they're a little more minor, um, in their roles. Um, but yeah. Awesome movie. And it has a lot of, like, references to the previous ones. It was really well done. And... There's like moments, uh, especially like with Andrew Garfield, there's a moment where uh, MJ is falling and he swoops down and saves her. And it's kind of reminiscent of how uh, his Gwen Stacy fell. And so like when he does save her, he's like a little choked up and like you can just read the emotions and the depth in his performance because you're like, Oh, 
he would find this a hard a hard moment to go through um all right and then no segue then we have spider-man into the spider-verse uh these are the animated ones uh they have uh the uh miles morales and this one was pretty dang good but the new one oh my god um I will say spoiler for the new one there's a moment in this one where they throw a bagel at somebody and that is significant that is all I will say um but yeah oh and this one like a uh, best animated feature at the Oscars the year it came out and it is so well deserved like visually the style is really cool and um, it also has uh, Peter Porker, which is John Mulaney, who plays a pig. He was like, I forget if he was a regular pig and got bit by a spider or he was a human and got bit by a radioactive pig, but it's just, uh, there's also Nicolas Cage as Spider Noir, who is like kind of this like, he's in black and white the whole movie and He's basically like kind of a 1940s kind of Spider-Man and it's just top tier. Highly recommend this if you haven't watched it. Um, but yeah, the newest one, uh, the Spider-Man, so this was Into the Spider-Verse, newest one's called Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And yeah, if you have time, make time. No, um, it's amazing. The I don't see how another movie could win animated feature against it. So if you're just a fan of animation, I would recommend watching it just because there are so many different styles of animation. Like there's still like hand drawn animation bits. Um, Cause yeah, it gets more involved with Spider-Man of different um, multiverses and most of them are like animated in different styles and it's just it's mind-blowingly good highly recommend um thank you for coming to my spider talk um but yeah um if you have the time you should marathon these two um maybe skip a couple there um if i had to rank them i prefer not to no <laughs> Um, uh, the newest one on, honestly, is my favorite, the, ac across the Spider-Verse. Um, then I'd probably say No Way Home is my second, um, and then after that it's hard to say. Cause most of them are really solid. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this 20 plus minute rant sorry i didn't script it i started to write a script and then i the then i stopped so here we are um but yeah hope you enjoyed and yeah go watch spider ver spider man across the spider verse um and we'll see you later happy viewings <laughs>